Going to get into a bit of sad news, actually. Um, RIP to the boss man that is Herman Cain. Um, Herman Cain passed away, unfortunately, um, due to coronavirus. Well, we're not sure if it's coronavirus because, you know, the stats with corona are weird, isn't it? Um, when somebody, um, I think Elon Musk mentioned it on Joe Rogan, but they've been doing it a lot in America. I don't know why, but if somebody has preconditioned, if someone has a pre-existing condition that makes them susceptible to COVID, but they get COVID and then they pass away, they just file it as a COVID death. Now, I'm not too sure if that's the kind of first preliminary sort of, um, you know, uh, conclusion they come to when they have to just, you know, maybe because they have to get the bodies out of the hospitals and move them to the morgues and then they're going to then have a second round of checks again. I'm not too sure, but they are tending to do that quite often. And the thing about Herman Cain that makes it a bit more complicated to say he just died from COVID is the fact that he was, a. Uh, am pretty sure he, he, he recovered from stage four cancer or something, colon cancer, which is one of the worst ones. So um, he was always susceptible to passing away um, with any kind of new disease that he was unfortunately come contracted and he, he did so over the last few days. But to say it was a COVID death might be a bit unfair but it's sad news isn't it i don't you know he might have been a bit of a doof regarding covid and he didn't really you know take the necessary precautions but it's still sad that when someone passes away um unnecessarily due to a virus that they you know we never knew existed prior to january it is a really sad um day but for if you go on the social media and you check on your feed the people that are commenting on it are bloody gloating at the fact that he passed away some people are actually hoping that other people in the room who were there m most notably maybe trump they're also hoping that he contracts it which is really really bizarre but this article kind of basically speaks on it and it's a bit of a tragic story regardless isn't it 74 is no age to die from coronavirus it's not age to die in general especially if you're a politician that's living the high life in it you should be um you know living way into your 90 into your 80s if a 90s so he had a lot of life to live really in that extent but this is from newsweek it's newsmax sorry it says um herman cain dies from coronavirus age 74 um the article is the following um, Herman Cain, the maverick American business star and Republican president can candidate, oh yeah, I remember that, who campaigned for a sweeping tax reform plan called 999, died Thursday morning after a month-long battle with coronavirus. He was 74. Cain, who recently joined Newsmax TV, was set to launch a weekly show, died in an Atlanta area hospital where he had been critically ill for several weeks. God almighty. He was admitted on July 1st, two days after being diagnosed with the COVID-19, 10 days before Cain had attended a rally for President Trump's... Um, uh, at the Tulsa, Oklahoma, but it's not known for sure where Kane or co-chairman for the Black Voice of Trump was in, uh, infected. He has been withdrawn on. He has been on whirlwind travel schedule in June, stopping in multiple cities. Now that's the issue they have in there, isn't it? We're having the issue here too, actually in the UK. The lack of track and trace <coughs> is really affecting people because you have no idea where you contacted the virus. There's no way for the authorities to contact the people that might have come in contact with you when you were at that place. It's a complete shit show, really, for the, for the sake for that, um, when you look at it that way. And I don't know how they want to deal with it. I'm not sure if the Americans just want to think, you know, they're just kind of hoping it kind of goes away by itself, which makes sense if you listen to what Trump said, right? He was, he's, gonna, he's kind of hoping it kind of washes away um, or kind of, you know, just decimates the population of the United States, whoever's left is left. Uh, whoever's left are the anointed chosen ones. I don't know, but bloody hell, man. It's bloody concerning to look at from the outside. It continues here. It says, um, he was one of the most original thinkers in American politics, veteran politician consultant, Dick Morris told Newsmax, noting um, he was creative and had strong conviction and an open mind and a deep sense of patriotism. Um, he was a great friend and a great guy. Sadly, um, the plague strikes home. Kane was a self-made man with an extraordinary backstory, one that made him a uh, towering example of hard work paying off. He was born December 13th, 1944 in Mississippi, Tennessee, and grew up poor in Atlanta, Georgia, where his father worked three jobs as a janitor, barber, and, and chauffeur, while his mother toiled as a domestic worker. A stellar student who worked hard, Kane graduated from Morehouse College with a mathematics degree um, in 1967. A year later, he married um, Gloria Etchinson, Etchinson, whom he met when he was a sophomore at Morehouse, and he and she was a freshman at Morris College, Morris Brown College. Um, Kane went on to earn a master's degree in computer science from the per Purdue University in 1971. Helped develop fire control ballistics for ships and fire ships for the U U.S. Navy. Bloody hell! Next, he joined the Coca-Cola Company as a systems analyst, and after considerable success, moved to Philsbury. Uh, this is the thing you don't really hear about people like this, right? I guess because he's well, because I guess because he's a Republican and he he, he was a staunch. 
Trump um, defender and supporter, right? Co-chair of the Black Voices for Trump, which is already an incredibly gay thing to be a part of, right? Any kind of group, any kind of um, group that you have a name and you come together and you do some weird handshake and you fly behind a banner, it's just completely gay. But hey, you got to do what you have to do. But he's got quite an interesting story, right? But I guess because he, you know, he advanced in his age and he become, you know, I guess something happens when you when you're a politician and you get a bit older, you tend to lean into your you tend to lean a bit more to the conservative side of things. You start to become a bit grumpy. You start to become risk averse. Maybe that's the thing that happens. Or maybe it's just part of his personality. But you don't hear any of these stories about his sort of like, you know, climb up. Because this is really inspiring, really, if you think about it. Um, it continues here. It says, after serving as a regional vice president for Pillsbury Burger King, um, Kane then took on the biggest challenge of his career as president and CEO of Godfather Pizza, a national chain um, teaching on the age of bankruptcy. In 14 months, he returned Godfather to profitability and led his management team to a buyout of the company wow later Kane said he could explain his success at Godfather in one word marketing Kane who, lo who long held an interest in public policy became a chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank in, Can in Kansas City o o Omaha Beach Omaha Brunch sorry in 1955 and serving in a position for 20 months in 2019 Trump nominated Kane to seat at the Federal Reserve Board but the nomination drew serious flack from Congress and Kane detractors because I ran as a Republican for President and the United States Senate I be and because I am an outspoken voice of conservatism and an outspoken voice of constitutional and the laws. I'm being attacked, Kane said, shortly before asking the president to withdraw his nomination. Kane first dabbling into politics came in 1966 when he was tapped as a senior advisor to the Dole and Kemp presidential campaign. He ran for Senate seat in Georgia in 2004 that was defeated in the Republican primary by John Isaacson. In 2016, Kane was diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer, but with the aggressive treatment, was able to beat the disease. In his book, This Is Herman Cain, he discusses life threatening illness writing it's been more than six years since then and guess what i'm completely cancer free cured well why was i spared against the odds god said not yet so yeah he lived a full life man like r.i.p to him but some of the vitriol he's getting online just it goes to show you just how mean and toxic social media has got in some regards right you don't like somebody's political views he passes away due to his own negligence don't get me wrong but just extend some courtesy wish him you know wish him um wish his and his family good wishes yeah send no cond send condolences to his, him and his family and you know just send him on his way um but kind of rejoicing in someone's death is super super bizarre i've never really understood that kind of way of thinking but hey i guess that is what you get when you mess with politics isn't it